Hey everybody, it's Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series here at Filmio. We are still going strong during the Tribeca Festival and I am really excited for this next interview. I have with me Lisa Robeson, who is the editor behind a film that has a huge buzz at this festival, American Dreamer. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us because I know that you're super busy at this festival. Um, so as we always do, we start with asking our wonderful interview subject for a synopsis of American Dreamer. So could you give us that, please? Uh, American Dreamer is about a man, uh, Phil, played by Peter Dinklage, who has the American dream of wanting to I don't know how much to give away. Uh, I'm going to say own a house. And he does not have the financial means at that time. And it really is what is the American dream? Is it really what he thinks he's searching for? Or is it something else? Great synopsis. Great way to put that without, like you said, yeah. giving too Spoiler. much too much away. Yeah, <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. And then, you know, how can you not already be madly intrigued about this? Because you say Peter Dinklage, and then you say Shirley MacLaine, and you're like, okay, I'm there. I don't need to know what this is about. Yeah. Um, but you bring the story to life through, you know, the, the wonderful expertise that you have. Tell me a little bit about how you kind of came to this project, because I think um, a lot of times we speak to primarily writers and, and directors, sometimes producers or, you know, directors and producers. Um, but I was particularly intrigued about you and excited to speak to hear more about kind of how editors get brought on to projects and then what this project in particular was like for you. Because we talked a little bit offline, you guys, that Lisa is based in Vancouver, um, Canada. So you're not like in the whole crazy Hollywood scene. Um, so I would love to just know how this came about. Uh, you know, it was through, uh, a lot of the work I do is from previous work contacts and long seven, six to seven years ago, I was approached, I was working two shows at once with the same post supervisor, everybody knew finishing one, starting another. And the post supervisor came to me and said, would you cut a short film for free? And I was like, really? You know, I'm already. And she said it's for a young man who is dying of cancer and it's for him to make a film project, uh, make a film foundation, I should right, say. Right. And I said, sure, I will. And they said, there's three directors. Um, that's all they told me. And I said, sure. And one of the directors happened to be Ted Melfi, along with Sam Raimi and Catherine Hardwick. Cut to years later, same post supervisor came to me saying, I know you're busy, are you available to, can I put your name forward for a movie, American Dreamer? Didn't know anything about it. And I didn't know uh, Ted was attached to it. So my name went out, uh, Paul Dector, the director interviewed some uh, other editors, local editors, and I think editors in LA. And, um, and Ted spoke highly to me, or of me, and so, Paul and I interviewed again, um, and that was pretty much how it was. Well, it was cool from is this it that that, previous like, just, yeah. You just that's kismet. what I always say. You just, just never kismet. know what is going to come out of something. Yeah. I love that. Um, tell me a little bit about your background, though, because as I was preparing for this, I just thought it was very interesting that you started out in production, but you know, became like this post like goddess. So, tell me a little bit about the transition and what that was like for you. I was uh, a camera assistant for about seven or eight years, and I loved it. I loved being a second camera assistant, running around, carrying the gear. Uh, I would have directors tell me, how do you, why are you moving the gear already? I was like, well, you got this angle, that angle, like what else is there to get? Or, and he was like, you should be a director. I was like, I don't want to be a director. And I loved that job. I wanted to be one of the first female camera operators back in the day, and this is back in the day, like the 90s kind of thing. And I was working on a production, Little Women, and I uh, have severe allergies. And my, I was carrying the gear out one morning and there's a plant called broom and it went into bloom and it's like goldenrod. So I have hay fever, but that same day it went into bloom. They had sprayed the acreage for Little Women, Winona Ryder and Susan Sarandon with the foam that airplanes land in to look like snow. So the mix of the pollen and the chemical 
Um, I had a severe asthma attack. Uh, I, I always get a little choked up. I died. I saw my dead stepdad. This whole moment and the panic rushing me, 911, doo doo doo, flew me off of Vancouver Island. Don't come back when we finish the movie in Vancouver. You can come back on set, but you're not coming back on set. And my doctor was like, you have to stop doing what you're doing. You can't be in various um, locations. You can't be on a farm. You can't be blah, blah, blah. So I was fortunate to have a brother who was editing. And about four to six months later, he said, come, in, come into the edit suite. Watch, watch me. Did you, get, you can't sit at home and be depressed because your career's ended. And um, I sat and watched him. I was the thing that wouldn't leave. I, old school, picked up the Lightworks manual, because that was the editing system, and read it while he was editing. And I interned. I just wouldn't go away. And then I was fortunate to assist on a series called Highlander. And again, the post supervisor was, Lisa can cut one. And I panicked. Like they literally set up uh, a Lightworks, again, old school, in a closet for me to edit one episode. And I was fortunate that one episode turned into three, three turned into eight. And I've just been um, very fortunate in not giving up. But I've also had people reminding me not to give up because it is easy to be overwhelmed going, what am I going to do? Maybe right, I should just right, right. give it all up. Maybe I should, you know, whatever, you know. So I was really fortunate that even once they believed in me, it helped me. And I had a lot of moments where I was like, am I doing the right thing? And I would just, that's where I like to say, cut with your gut, is that if you're loving it, Somebody else might like it. Wow. Yeah. That's just, I mean. That's my, so, sorry, quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, like, obviously, I did not expect that answer, but it's just so inspiring. And I just feel so happy to see you in that chair after hearing all that and just, don't, like, imagining, like, this much about, like, what that was like for you. Insane. Yeah. So, obviously, you're bringing, like, just an amazing amount of strength on all kinds of levels, you know, to your projects and to that, you know, such as American Dreamer. Talk to me about what it's like to sit in a room and edit um, a film. I, I'm, I don't know, I'm just in awe of what you do because even if I have to do something really like small and like, you know, garage band or whatever, I'm like, please God, like let that little cursor go there. And if it doesn't, you're just like pushing. I'm just like, you know what? I'm leaving it as it is. There's a, like a few like pauses in the beginning. They'll forgive me for it, right? So I just, you know, can only imagine what it's like. And I um, found this saying online that you, I guess, quoted it's an adage maybe within the editing community, but I just thought it was so beautiful that a script is written three times, once on paper, once on the set, and once in editing. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Because I just think it's very cool and obviously applies to this film. Uh, it does apply to um, American Dreamer plus every every project I'm on. That is not my saying. That is, right. I, don't know who, I don't know who. Some old adage that you quoted. Somebody a lot smarter than me said that. But it is. And it's, it's the lovely thing about that is um, I respect the script very much and I respect uh, the talent and the actors that say the words and even if they improv or anything. But to just have that in the back of your mind that it can be Things can be adjusted. So as you're editing, if you think a scene, maybe this scene should go here or there. And, and Ted Melfi was so open and um, so confident with his writing and, uh, and that he was like, if it doesn't work for you, just cut it out. Like I don't, you know, really? so I, I, would cut, I would do an alt. I would cut it as per script, but then do an alt. And, and um, we could work from there going, this is what you, this is what it is. This is what we had. And some of the actors might go off script and ad libs. So we have these alts with the ad libs and, or without. So, yeah. 
Wow. Do you ever get attached um, to oh. any of the... Like, I really hope he picks this one because this is really the killer one. And then, like, he doesn't, like, pick that option. Like, how do you kind of, I don't know, just rectify that, you know, day after work, not an average job. But, you know, <laughs> we still have our, our different things. With your, you know, business or type of, you know, career, how do you kind of just make peace with it maybe? Well, you do. I do fall in love with moments. And, and because you stare at, I, I call right. editors ghosts. We see everything and they don't see us. And there's the little, the little movements they do, whether they're aware that they have, whether it's a little tick or it's a purposeful thing that they do to get an emotion across. I might fall in love with that. And I used to be such a fighter for what I think. You know, and then somebody told me or, you know, you got to fight, pick your battles and learn to collaborate. And I really love the collaboration and listening to people like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like an orange. Well, I like an apple and trying to find out why. Right. And it's also I am a big believer on what I edit. Uh, I edit it today. I usually look at it the first thing the next day because yeah, I might be sleepy, I might be tired, I might have a little too much coffee, it might have been a long weekend, <laughs> and you kind of go, no, it's dragging, or I need to bring it out more, that kind of thing. So it's really about listening to my, what I've done and then listening to what uh, Paul and Ted are. Interesting. You know. I mean, I was looking at, you know, just your career. I mean, you've edited over 50, like, well, shall we just say, pieces of content, so whether it's television, film, whatever. What do you think that you've learned most from all that that maybe you applied to American Dreamer? Um, again, the biggest thing I learned was from Ted was what's the shot you want? Because, he was the editor. Yeah, what's the shot I want? Mm. And he would, he really helped me, um, and Paul's a fabulous director, like he really got such cinematic moments and really lovely performances that really hit your soul. But he would be like, you know, split screen more. If you wanna, if it's two people like this and you wanna create a longer pause, split screen it and make it a pause or tighten it up or, you know, blow it up a bit. Um, well, he just sounded like the ultimate like oh, collaborator, right? I'm yeah. sure you, many people may wanna clone him because I know that's not always the, the relationship. Yeah, Clearly and he, not. and very, very, is is this funny? Is that funny? How does this make you feel? And we would ask, and same with Paul. Paul was very concerned about, is this, is this crossing the line? Is this funny? Is this not funny? Are we getting too serious here? And it was really lovely to have men ask me as a woman, my opinion. Like very lovely. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like there was a lot of respect. Uh, and I felt that and very grateful for that. So it sounds like you had an amazing experience, very collaborative. Um, what do you hope people take away from the film, especially since, you know, you cut it? And again, we don't have an opportunity to speak to that many editors. So, you know, asking you that question, I think, is just very interesting because you're seeing it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And you've cut it because you want people to feel a certain way mm -hmm. what is it with this or maybe are there a couple of things i i really want people to especially in today's society where we're looking at something and we're not looking at each other mm -hmm. you know um crossing the street a lot of people don't even look up and it's all about what we can buy you know i drive this or i have that or you know all the brands is that life isn't so monetary it's the connections and the act of kindness if you can just hold that door for that connection with the other human um and to allow yourself to be vulnerable and to love and to live and it's not about possessions it's really about what you can do for other people I is what i think i really hope people get that because I th feel that's, that's the takeaway. Right, and that's everything, isn't it? It is, and I think we get wound up about things. 
and that's why it's kind well, of good in, to in go off grid. In this culture, I think particularly, um, in a well, your Canadian American is almost the same thing. Um, you know, it's more of a capitalist society. I had the opportunity to live in Europe for many years. It's a much different approach to life, although still some parts of ours. But, you know, we think that everybody's living like this. In Africa, they're not living like this. In India, they're not living like this. So it's always like, oh, we want to make sure that people are more connected, but you're like, in America, maybe, or in mm -hmm. this culture. Mm -hmm. um, even a lot of parts of Latin America is di it's different. So, you know, I think just to be able to open up our minds to being able to think as well like other cultures and keep like the coolness, the best parts of Americanism and some of the, the great parts of other cultures is always a good thing. Yeah. And that, that human factor, I think, is what we can always bring more of into yeah. in our yeah. culture. It's that, it's so not. if stories like this can help with that, that's like so amazing. So what are you going to do during the festival that you haven't done already? We talked a little bit offline that um, Lisa's nephew lives here, so yeah. she got like a, a little personal tour. Yeah. Um, but what about festival-wise? Anything that you as an editor want to see or critique? You know what? I missed, <laughs> I missed some earlier ones, um, and we're trying to get tickets to see uh, a movie tomorrow night. Wait, yeah. tickets, don't they just roll out the red carpet ah. for come on? Editors of like major <laughs> spotlight narratives? Let me talk to Bob De Niro about that. But yeah, yeah well, tickets for some other films yeah. that you're like kind yeah. of still scoping yeah. out. And I like to not, I like to kind of just go in blank and not do the research. Yeah, I, I Because agree. I find maybe whoever wrote the synopsis or whatever is just, it's just whatever I can go in and see. Yeah. You know. I feel like for me, like I look at the first line of what this is about and the picture, I'm like, I'm either there or I'm not. Yeah. For the personal, not for, you know, obviously this. Well, I hope you have a great rest of the festival. How, do you know what you're going to be, like, editing next? How quickly or slowly do you get projects? Or obviously, I guess it's very hard to tell, isn't it? Well, right now I'm working on Firefly Lane Season 2. Okay. And I did Season 1, so I'm working on that till... Is it dramatically different, um, editing something that's a series rather than a feature? Do you ever get bored when it's a series? No, no. And I didn't get bored. No, I don't get bored. And a lot of it is, um, A, the schedule is a little tighter. Mm -hmm. But um, Yeah, because people have said you've worked on, on television that it's like you're shooting a small movie like yeah. every, every week. Yes, so, yeah. and, it, and Firefly Lane is very, uh, very feature-like. And, and um, we're allowed to have our own uh, freedom and creatively. So, nice. yeah. Yeah. So I guess I would say I want to roll the dice. You are active on social. You're not. I'm going to say no. I am semi-active. Are you? I okay. don't. Um, you know what the tough thing is? What? Is we sign these NDAs. It's a non-disclosure non right. agreement. But what so is as, that? A, as an editor, I can't really... Well, no, just I, the fabulous life of Lisa. Oh, you don't have to I tell could any, do that. Like, I could any, do that. You know, I do yeah. do that. But I feel like as an editor, it's like, here's my keyboard from this angle. <laughs> <laughs> right, no giving away of anything, yeah. but just like, you know, uh, the back of your heel going into the yeah, <laughs> yeah. bay or something, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. But what what are you on, what's your handle on social in case any at, of at Lisa, viewers would At Lisa Robinson. Okay, yeah. that's easy enough. Yeah. Well, Lisa, I want to let you go. I could talk to you all day because you, you just have a very cool vibe, so it's nice. Um, and just your story is just like amazing, you know, personally. But I will let you get back to the rest of the festival. Thank you so much for taking the time. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? I just want to say thank you to uh, Ted Melfi and Paul and everybody attached to this film and the brilliant performances that are in it. I made my life a lot easier. Well, yeah. that's so nice to hear. And I'm sure that they're happy as well. And it's just, you know, very exciting to just see all of the, of the energy around, you know, this yeah. film, really. Yeah. So congratulations again on it. And um, enjoy the festival. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure. And all of you, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this interview with Lisa. I am Lauren DeLisa Coleman for Filmio, the Inside Series. Don't forget to click on the very next episode.